and welcome to Kids Church Elementary. If you are in preschool, you're in luck. We have something for you. It's Kids Church Preschool. Go ahead and find that and you can click on that. For my elementary friends, I need you just to grab your Bible. We have our adventure Bible, but you guys can grab whatever Bible you have. Grab it and get ready for our lesson because it's going to be a good one today. Hi guys, how are you? Hello! We are back our fifth week in January. I know January's been so long, but now it's yeah. now it's so long, get it? Ah, I got that. Good fun. So I'm still freezing. It's still cold outside. Yes. So I've been very cold. I, I have to. I I can't get my hands warm. What about you guys? I saw some pictures of people going to the snow. Oh, it's been so fun. So, I, I send us pictures because I would love to see what you guys are doing in the snow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, we'll, we'll put them on the show. Okay. okay. So, we have been talking about the word responsibility. And responsibility means what? It is showing that you can be trusted with what is expected of you. So, today, we are going to be talking about our mouths, our words. Our words, because we're expected to use a certain type of word. And we're expected not to use certain types of words. And I think you guys know that, but it's always a helpful reminder. It's always great, even as an adult, to be reminded of that because it's easy to let those words fly sometimes. Now, we're going to be talking about a guy, your favorite guy today. Go ahead. We have my friend, Saul Paul. So if you guys don't know who Saul Paul is, have no fear. I will explain it to you. So there's this guy named Saul, and he wasn't the nicest of people. And that's because he really believed that his way was the right way which was that Jesus wasn't the son of God, that Jesus didn't come on earth to, for us to have a relationship with God. And so he was super upset that Jesus was saying that. So he told everybody, hey, that's not true. And then he even, he was even hurting the people who mm -hmm. would say that Jesus was the son of God. And, and he thought he was doing right. He thought, cause he was like, no, I wanna make sure we're not spreading this, this terrible information. And so it makes sense that he did that. But totally. But then everything changed because he was walking one day to go hurt some more people and he got stopped. He saw this big shining light and he was blinded and he heard the voice of Jesus saying like, why are you persecuting me? And he was like, oh my gosh, like he was really who he says he was. Can you so, imagine how bad he felt? Oh, well, oh yeah, Lord, like he, you know? he thought he was doing what was right, but it really wasn't. Oh. Okay. And so then he completely changed his life around, he was able to see again, and he went all over the, like, areas, their, their worlds. They didn't know that, like, you know, the Asia States. Minor and yeah. that area over there. They didn't know that, like, everywhere else, but their entire world, he walked around sharing who Jesus was. I mean, he was, he went from being so against Jesus to being so for Jesus. Like, yeah. he would, if there was a fan club for Jesus, he was... He was in charge. He was the of it. president. He was, he was the vice president. He was the treasurer. treasurer. He was everything. He he was all about it. So when he would travel, mm -hmm. he would start churches. And basically, what a church was back then, it didn't have a building. Use it was a bunch of people who lived near each other who hung out, mm -hmm. sort of like some of our churches have been doing. Oh, micro yeah, like churches. Our churches. If your parents do a micro church and yeah. you have to go along, it's kind of like that. It's kind of all yeah. get together and they talk. So he would do this, and he would start these little churches in different areas. And then what he'd do is he'd write back to them. Because remember, you know, we have planes, trains, automobiles now where we can go places, but they only had their feet to walk on. So once he visited a place, very rarely did he get back there again. It, it would have been a really long trip to go back and be like, oh, I forgot something. So he right. would write letters. Because remember, no texting, no computers yeah. then. So actually, like, physically, snail piece of paper, snail mail, write it out. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't even snow milk, and it was just like delivered by someone who delivered it and delivered it, yeah. and it finally got like there. A, like a, what's it called, like a... Parchment? No, like when you know you need someone else. A relay race. Relay race. Thing, yes, you know? it was kind of like that, yeah. So, so we're going to be looking at one of those. It's in the book of Ephesians. It was yeah. written to... Um, the city of Ephesus, these Christians there. So, how are we going to find Ephesians? So, we are going to go to the book of Ephesians on its following side. You guys can go to your table of contents and your handy dandy Bible. Remember, if you don't have a Bible, that's totally fine. But if you ever want one, this one's really great. It's called the Adventure Bible. We Love read it. the NIV version, but you can read whatever version. Yes, yeah, whatever works for you. Makes you are happy. Uh, Let's see. 
All right, so we have our Old Testament and we have our New Testament. We're going to go into New Testament. We're going to say Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. So you look at the page number that it says. 1295 for us. 395. And it says, who wrote this book? Paul, mm -hmm. because remember, we call it a book because all of these are put together, but it was actually a letter. It was to a specific set of people. And he wrote this, he said, to show the Ephesians that the church is not a building, but a people who love and obey God, Jesus. I love yeah. that. That's, yeah. that's so cool. So where in Ephesians are we going? We're going to go to chapter four. So that's the big four. And this is a very small book. Yeah. Like and then digits. it's the title of it says unity and maturity in the body of Christ. Mm. And then we're going to go to verse 29. So once you find the big four, you're going to go to the little 29. So it's towards the end. It's closer to the five. Great. You got it? I got it. All I'm right. I'm with you. So it says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs and that it may benefit those who listen. So let's break that down for a second. Oh, there some okay. there? Yeah, there is. Unwholesome. That's not something I use a lot of. That yeah. word I don't use a lot of. I use wholesome sometimes, but not a lot. So wholesome would mean like things that are good and mm -hmm. happy. So unwholesome would mean things that are not good, that are not happy. Yeah. So he's saying, do not let any <clears throat> unkind, unnice yeah. words come out of your mouth. But only what is helpful for building up others. So making people feel good mm, okay. according to their needs. So whatever they need to hear. So all of this really is about someone else. Taking yeah. responsibility for what you say to someone else. Yeah, because then it continues and says to benefit those who listen. So mm -hmm. we use those words to help them and they would benefit from it. But then my question would be how would they benefit from it, Bonnie? Well, because it would have to be if we're using kind of loving words, right? Yeah. They would benefit because they would see Jesus in us and grow closer to who he is. Exactly. I mean, Jesus' words were powerful. If you really think about it, words are powerful. Mm -hmm. God created the universe with his words. I mean, literally, he spoke it and it was there. I mean, that's some big power. My favorite example of words is toothpaste. So oh, yeah. you take a toothpaste tube and you squeeze all the toothpaste out of it, and that's like our words coming out of our mouth. And when it's out... You can never get that toothpaste back in that tube. It's it's impossible. And that's what it is with our words. Mm -hmm. When we say things to people, they can be things that are great and kind and loving. And if they're not kind and loving um, and encouraging, then it can hurt other people. Exactly. I I sometimes tell my beach house friends, and I think Miss Bonnie talks about this with her treehouse friends. Sometimes, and even in our older age, we can remember the things that were said to us that were unkind when we were really little. I think I, I'm having a deja vu moment here, like we've had this discussion before. I think we talk about this a lot. Yeah, because it's something, negative words can stick with you probably a lot longer than positive words. And that's a really sad thing. So what we need to do is put more positive words out there to help kind of counteract those negative ones that, that kind of sit with us. Well, and I've heard that one negative word needs 10 positive words to counteract it. I mean, that's a huge ratio. It is. I mean, that's big. So our question this week are, you asked me, you asked me the question. Yeah. Why do our words matter? Because they build up or they tear down. Yeah. So we have the responsibility. We've been entrusted mm -hmm. with words. So to benefit others. To Look at you. Oh, quoting, quoting my friend Solpa. So the hardest place I find to use kind words is with my family. Mm, yes. People who know me closely, it's easy because I'm like, they're going to love me no matter what. And that's what we really need to be careful with our words. I think when I'm really frustrated, that's when mm. that's when I, I call, it, we call it flipping your lid, you know, because yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden all these words start coming out and I don't really necessarily mean them. It's just like I have all these emotions and I don't know how to figure them out. Mm. And so I think a lot of the times it's just taking a pause saying, God, help me with my words. It, has to be, it can even be something super short, like, God, help me. And then say, yeah. okay, I won't use those words. Yeah, and, and it is. Sometimes you're right. It's pausing. It's pausing for a second and going, hold my tongue, hold my tongue. You know, not physically hold my tongue, but just 
You could if you need to. Just make sure your hands are sanitized and you're holding only your tongue and then sanitize your hands afterwards. So yeah, don't hold other people's tongues. Don't hold other people's tongue. So it's not your job. Yeah, that is <laughs> kind of strange. So, so we want to know why your words matter and we'd love to hear what you guys do this week. What do you do to help yourself remember? So, exactly. Um, I, I don't know, but I, we'd love to hear, okay? Mm -hmm. Can I pray for us? I would love for you to okay. pray for us. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much um, that you don't leave us, that you're here with us, Father, that as we take responsibility for our words, that you will help us um, to have the words that build up, that you will help us to have the words that encourage our family members, that encourage our friends. Show us what we need to say and how we need to say it to build those up around us because we learned today that Paul told the Ephesians that it's all about building the other person up, that whoever is listening would be encouraged. Lord, we love you so much and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. We'll see you guys in a few minutes at the application. Okay. Good job, Bonnie. Thank you. Good job to you too. Oh, I see what you did there. She's okay. good. Bye guys. Bye. Today we are helping out at the drive through food pantry and we have a mission for you guys at home. So during the month of February, we are doing a food drive. We're gonna send home a bag with you and you guys get to fill it up and then bring it back because all of the food you guys gather will be delivered by these wonderful people who are with us today and they're gonna give it to people who need it. So grab a bag from us, or if you don't come to church in person, go ahead and look at FCCHB.com and you'll find a link in the children's area to the list of food that they can bring in. Yeah. So definitely check it out and let's help out some good people. We can all do it together. All right, see ya. Bye guys. Hey friends, one of my favorite things to do is celebrate Jesus. So hop up on your feet, get ready, because we are going to dance, we're going to sing, and we're going to celebrate Jesus. There is only one who can do anything amazing.
is amazing one of my favorite parts of Kids Church because I really like doing stuff and talking about what I'm learning. I have, um, Miss Allie and I actually are reading a book mm -hmm. together yeah. and we're reading it separately and then we talk about it together because that talk about it part is the part that helps it come to life. It's the part that changes me. And because like we all have different perspectives, right? Miss Bonnie can read something and hear it completely different than what I can hear it. And just yeah. because we're all made special, and so I think it's super cool because hearing other people's thoughts, you're like, oh, I never thought about that. Yeah, and yeah. so I love that. So that's what this application is all about. So this week, what you're going to do is you're going to get a piece of paper or a whiteboard if you have it. Mm -hmm. And remember, Paul wanted us to use uh, wholesome words. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to think, not unwholesome words, but wholesome words. So what you're going to do is you are going to make a speech bubble like that. See how that's a speech bubble? Yeah, and you could also do a little like circle, 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 circle. Oh, you could. So, and in here, what you're going to do is uh, you draw the bubble, brainstorm helpful words that you can speak this week. Oh, okay. So, like, what's a good word? Good job. Oh, that's a great one. Good job. Also, nice try. Oh, that's a good one. Because I try a lot of things and I don't often mm -hmm. do it. So, I love you. You can say I love you. That's a great one. I love you. So, and then what you're going to do is you are going to put this up somewhere in your house on, I always say fridge, because everyone goes to the fridge sometime during the day. I eat As a reminder to use these words. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm telling my family members, nice try, good job, I love you. And you know what? The I love you, I love that you said that. Mm -hmm. I love that you said I love you. <laughs> because it is easy to forget to say that to people we love. Oh, yeah. Because we assume, well, you know I love you mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, um, so that's a great one. So what are the questions? Because I'm going to doodle around this now okay. and decorate it. What are some of the questions we're going to do? Alrighty. Why do your words matter so much? Mm -hmm. hmm. Think about times at home, school, or other places when it's hardest for you to watch your words. What sets you off? What can mm -hmm. you do to respond the right way? So Miss Bonnie and I gave examples earlier. <laughs> So what do you guys have a hard time with? Because we all have different times that's the hardest. Right, and sometimes for us, like I'm not great at night. At yeah. night I'm tired and I know then I have to just completely be quiet mm -hmm. and not say anything because I know that my words will not be kind. So what are you, is it in the morning when you wake up? Yeah, I'm, I'm grumpiest when I wake up. I, I had a bit on that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Bonnie. If you're going to show God's love to those around you, how do you need to speak differently to those around you? Mm. Wow. So your words are going to be an example of who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot of responsibility. It is, but I think we're all up to the challenge. I think we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And believe me, there'll be times you make mistakes. Yep. Even though you, you, I've read this verse maybe like a million times. Yep. And I still make mistakes. But the big thing is, is we, we admit that we made a mistake. We ask for forgiveness and we move on. Constantly asking for forgiveness yeah. for things I say. All the time. Yeah. So sorry. You mean to say it that way. So sorry. You say sorry to the person, sorry to God. Yep. God, exactly. I'm really sorry I hurt somebody. That I'm going to really work on it. Please give me the strength. And he will, because he does. I mean, he slowly will start. Before you say something, there'll be that little catch in your inside. You'll be like, I shouldn't say this. And then you have a choice. Yeah. So, yeah. And finally, there's an old saying that goes like this. Sticks um, and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Do you agree with the statement? Why? I'm not going to give my answer, but I'd like to hear your guys' answer. So reach out to us at kidskids mm -hmm. at fcchb.com. Make your speech bubble. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, I love it. You could say, nice, nice job. Thank you so much. 
I can buy two of them. She did. She was like, well, because Miss Bonnie pointed to nice try. I know. But I didn't want to say nice try. I, I couldn't see from the other side which yeah. I was pointing to. So, all right, friends. Thanks for joining us this week, and we'll see you next week, okay? Yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs>